We just received this parcel from nextpcb.com. In this video, we are going to unbox it, we will review the components quality, we will assemble them, and then we will bring life to our creative project with some cool programming. Stick around to see how it all comes together. By the way, this project is sponsored by nextpcb.com, but more on them later in the episode. Let's dive into the episode. Recap. In the previous episode, we designed the PCBs for this project and ordered them from nextpcb.com, including the bomb. It took just 5 days for manufacturing, shipping from China, customs clearance and delivered to India. Now that we have the parcel, let's unbox it. Nice! Our components are wrapped in bubble wrap. We have two main packages. One, our creative PCB. Two, our creative bomb. Let's quickly check out the bomb first. We have WS2812C slash W addressable LEDs. Samsung 1 microfarad 0402 package capacitors. And then we have the ESP8266. What the heck? I thought I ordered the Node MCU ESP8266 module. But instead, we have caught the ESP8266 EXIC. This is actually lies inside the module. But I need a module. This is a great reminder to always double check your bomb before placing an order. Consider this as a learning moment. We'll make sure to verify every detail moving forward. Let's check out the PCB package. The package is secure and well protected. So our PCBs arrived in perfect conditions. At first glance, the bare PCB looks very professional and feels high quality. After examining the cell screen, solder mask and conductive pads, you can see the excellent work by the manufacturer. The precision of the cell screen, the even application of the solder mask and the quality of the conductive pads all are impressive, showing the careful craftsmanship put into the making this PCB. Let me take a moment and thank nextpcb.com for sponsoring this project and supporting creators like me around the world in bringing interesting projects to you. Nextpcb.com is a reliable multi-layer PCB manufacturer that takes order online and delivers PCB to your doorstep globally. Currently, Nextpcb has very exciting offers. You can get your first PCB order free up to $20 and they are also offering free PCB assembly for 5 PCBs and 50% off on up to 100 PCB assemblies. What are you waiting for? Take advantage of this offer for your next PCB order. I will be sharing these design files with all of you and making this project open source. You are free to use this design, add additional features or make modifications. If you are interested, you can also get these PCBs manufactured for yourself. Let's start the assembly process. First, have the required components handy. Apply very little amount of the solder to the pads. Place the component in position using tweezers, then touch the pad where we already applied the solder. That's it. Repeat the same for other pads as well. Next, apply a small amount of solder to the capacitor pad. Place the component and touch the pad. Let's repeat the same process with the remaining 36 components. This may take me a while, but for you, it's a snap. And with another quick snap, we'll complete the assembly of ESP8266 module as well. Now that we have fully assembled PCB, let's proceed with the programming. Visit the ESP Home Flasher GitHub repository and scroll down to find ESP Flasher application for Windows. Click on it to download. Next, visit the WLED GitHub repository and scroll down. Check out the WLED release 0.14.4 assets. Click on show all assets to find ESP8266 binary file. Click on it to download. 
If you already have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer and have programmed the ESP8266 at least once, you can skip this step and go to this timestamp. For those who haven't programmed the ESP8266 before, visit the Silicon Labs page and go to the download section. Download the CP210X Universal Windows Driver. Go to the directory where the files were downloaded and extract them. Then copy the directory of the extracted folder. Open the device manager and look for other devices where you will find the CP2102 driver error. Click on it. Click on update driver and choose the option browse my computer for drivers. Paste the directory of the driver and click on next. That's it. The driver has been successfully updated. You can close all the windows now. Now connect the ESP8266 to the computer using USB micro B cable. Next open device manager and go to the port section. Here you will see the port name that your ESP8266 is connected to. In my case it's COM5. Go back to the directory where the files were downloaded and run the ESP home flasher. Select the serial port. Browse the firmware. and then click on flash ESP. This action will erase the previous code on the ESP8266 and flash the WLED firmware to it. Once the code is successfully flashed, you will see the message done flashing completed and you will also see the change in LEDs color. Let's flip this over to see the LEDs. I'll also turn off the ambient lights to better focus on the LED colors. I notice that some of the LEDs in the middle are not turning on. We'll fix this in the upcoming steps. Let's connect the ESP8266 over Wi-Fi. First go to your computer's Wi-Fi settings and look for a network named WLED AP. Connect using the default password WLED1234 as shown here. Once connected, it should be automatically open a web page. If not, no worries. You can manually type in the IP address 4.3.2.1 in your browser. This is the home page of WLED. Let's go to the control section. First and foremost, we need to configure the node MCU for our application. To do this, go to the configure tab and choose LED preferences. Here we have a lot of options to configure. We can limit the maximum current consumption of all LEDs as well as the consumption of individual LEDs. We can also select the LED type and color order. Additionally, we can configure the LED length. As you can see here, the LED length is set to 30, but we have 37 LEDs. I think that's why some of the LEDs in the middle of the PCB are not glowing. Let's increase the length to see if we can fix the issue. As soon as I click save, the rest of the LEDs started glowing. I think we fixed the issue. Now let's go back and explore what else we can do. We can select a specific color from the spectrum here. For our arc reactor, the light should be pale blue. So let's select that. We can choose any other color we want from the spectrum as shown here. There are also preset colors red, orange, white, pink, blue, green and more. We also have some effects for the colors. Android will give you a pattern based on the preset colors. If we change the color to red, the pattern will continue in red. The same pattern applies to blue if we change to blue. There are lot of effects here. My favorite one is the diesel light. 
We can also turn the lights on or off using the power button here. In the next steps, we need to design a diffuser and casing for this. A diffuser will help to spread the light and make it more visually appealing. As you can see here, the same animation looks much better with the diffuser. One more important thing is that the distance between the light source and the diffuser also plays a key role. For our application, the arc reactor we need this effect. So we need to design a casing to hold this diffuser at this distance. In the next video, we will cover the diffuser and casing design along with its manufacturing and then we will put everything together and test it. That's a wrap for this episode. Next time, we will focus on the crucial steps to make our arc reactor look just like in the movies. Stay tuned for more exciting updates and as always, happy innovating, happy experimenting. Bye-bye.